Grayson Highlands solo backpacking three-day adventure. People said you gotta check out the Grayson Highlands. It's got ponies, it's got views, it's got all kinds of great stuff. Look at that view. This is probably pretty prime real estate during the nicer seasons, but right now it's a little cooler. Pretty much have this area to ourselves. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? I'm trying to have dinner. Okay, I screwed up. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and we are finally here. And by we, I mean me and you, virtually. I'm actually here alone, about to start a solo backpacking trip. Three days, two nights, in the Grayson Highlands State Park. Well, actually, I'm not camping in the state park, that's not allowed. But I'm gonna use this to access the Appalachian Trail, or a section of it, and we're gonna do a three-day adventure. Let's see, Massey Gap. So this is also the parking lot for overnight backpackers, which, as stated, is exactly what we're doing. Now, usually at the beginning of these videos, I spend a lot of time telling you exactly what's going on, but for this trip, it's kind of cool because it's part of a video series where we planned out this whole trip together and really kind of went through all the steps. So I don't have to repeat all that. If you want to see the rest of the videos, go ahead and check them out. I'll link the playlist. Basically, I went all the way from deciding where to go I actually had the viewers decide. So what I need is a little help from you guys. Feel free to throw those ideas out there. I'm looking forward to this little project. I threw it out there. I said, guys, where should I go? I counted the votes. It was close, you guys. And ultimately the winner was, based on popular demand, people said you gotta check out the Grayson Highlands. It's got ponies, it's got views, it's got all kinds of great stuff. We are in the final throes of winter according to the calendar at least. Now I was a little skeptical of that last week when I got an ice storm that knocked over a bunch of trees in my neighborhood. But as of right now, it's in the high 40s, which I am super happy about. Now, it may also go down into the 20s tonight, so I'm prepared for that. Now, as part of this series, I had a whole pack video as well, where I showed everything in my pack. Winter backpacking gear list. Along with this, I do have a gear list that I made, and you can see, because it's a winter trip, there is a lot of clothing. The clothing worn is actually seven pounds, which sounds insane, but for the sake of science, I figured I'll bring all of that extra clothing for colder temps, which I thought I might get, and I don't believe I'm going to. But as I go through the video, I'll tell you what I ended up not using. So if you're interested in what's in my pack, check out that separate video. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on getting on the trail. We're doing a loop from that parking lot up to the AT, Thomas Knob Shelter. Night two, we'll do the Wise Gap Shelter and just kind of work it from there. Oh look, a little bit of snow on the ground. A little evidence of winter as it makes an exit this year. Now, as we progress here, we're gonna get into more exposed areas and I do apologize for the wind noise. This place is just notorious for that and that definitely factors in to any temperature readings you get when you come out here. For instance, right now, high 40s, we're still wearing this fleece because that wind just is sucking the heat right off of me. Ooh. A little soggy in here. Thankfully, because I have my winter boots, they are nice and waterproof, or at least highly water resistant, so don't have to worry about that too much on these trips compared to trail runners. Oh wow. Hey guys, how's it going? Well that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> uh, watch, that'll be like the only ponies I see on this trip. There are some day hikers behind me that are uh, having fun doing Instagram selfies with it and I figured why well, rain on their parade when I'm doing a whole loop here. But if that is my only pony sighting, I'll have just given up a lot of footage. But that took what, a few steps from the car? not bad at all by the way you see a layers come off already it is around noon I don't know if I mentioned that high noon maybe working on one o'clock a little bit of a late start but I drove pretty late into the night hit a motel six last night got some sleep but I was just tired so I didn't get up to like eight because I didn't get to sleep until like one I figured if I was actually paying for a hotel room I should probably get legitimate sleep yeah because I usually sleep in the car, so I figured I'd treat myself. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a late start. All 
right, so Thomas Knob Shelter is where we're going. It's only three miles away. That's awesome. And we just keep heading this way. Why shelter two miles as well if we went the other direction? That's where we're going to return from um, on our second night, which means it'll be a pretty easy hike out. Hi. All right, well, now I got new friends. See, we are actually going to go Appalachian Trail southbound towards Tom Snob Shelter. To register. Register when entering this area. Alright, let's go. Now I'm even happier that I still have my winter boots even though, like I said, tonight it could go into the 20s. But right now, I think we touched 60 degrees. So glad I'm wearing long underwear. But anyway, the good thing about these boots is, and my feet aren't overheating yet, they breathe well and I have lighter socks on, but they are highly water resistant for use in the snow, but that also works quite well in the mud. sheltered from the wind here and between these rocks <sighs> it's like 218 so been on the trail for a couple hours now check the GPS for mileage we're up to 2.3 miles 2.37 out of what like four oh I need a snack and some water <sighs> oh the variation in temperatures is crazy Definitely glad I didn't get suckered into not bringing extra layers and whatnot because based on how it felt in the parking lot, I could have come out here with a lot less, but I'm glad I have what I have. It's probably overkill, but again, like I said, I had this packed from that video I did about what's in my pack, and that's gear that I take all the way down to sub-zero. It's ridiculous for this trip, but it's already packed. It's already only 15 pounds base weight. Of course, I took some of my outer layers on, so I probably added about a pound and a half or not two pounds to it in the layers I'm not wearing but I'm gonna put those back on tonight and uh, my fleece pants probably a little excessive but that's okay I'll certainly be comfortable tonight but right now I'm gonna get a snack usually in my front pack here which is just for camera gear I do stow some snacks I didn't do that but all my foods right here on top and one giant stuff sack so get myself a snack out of here drink some water get back on the trail Went ahead and sent an okay message to my wife while I was here as well on my spot messenger just to let her know. Cell service here is pretty much sporadic. I got it a couple times here and there, but I would say don't don't count on it. Oh, all right. Ready to go a couple more miles. nice doing another trip with even less gear in the summer but for now no bugs less sweat a little bit of snow to navigate but it's not like we have to wear snowshoes so it's just enough to make it interesting well, at least the ice will clean a little mud off the boots maybe Trail 
towards Tom's Knob Shelter. And from what the viewers have told me, nearby, within say 0.2 miles of each shelter that I'm aiming for each day, there's good area to set up my hammock because I'm hammock camping. Frozen bog and onto the shelter. Should be like less than a mile now. Looks like we got some more ponies. At first I thought they were only in the state park, but apparently there's several different herds and they are around both of the areas that I'll be camping each night. One of my viewers actually, his name is Planner, and he sent me a message that said to go about two to 300 yards past the shelter and there'd be some good spots for hammocks and there would also probably be some ponies around or at least there has been in his experience. He said, don't worry about a bear bag, but I would definitely hang a pony bag because they are accustomed to backpackers and they'll come nudging your pack. That barometric pressure is dropping. You can see by that needle there and that little warning indicator that there was a sharp decrease in pressure. <sighs> a little bit for me going uphill, but not really. I've been at this elevation for a while. It's probably because the storm's rolling in. So let's find some camp. All right, well, there's the shelter. So, shouldn't be too much longer. We'll set up. There should be a water source around here as well. Just gotta check my notes on which direction that is, but we are here. As you see, I have the rain gear on, put the uh, pants on, as well as the jacket. I even have my camera stashed away, but I got a break in the rain. And you can see they have some awesome places for tents. I mean, look at these nice, flat, soft looking areas. So if you are a tent camper, you are set up and look at that view. This is probably pretty prime real estate during the nicer seasons, but right now it's a little cooler. I saw one tent back there when I was hiking over here, but we pretty much have this area to ourselves, which is cool. So I'm just gonna poke around, maybe back in here, see if I can put a little hammock up. I'm gonna have the shelter from the wind and obviously trees to set up my hammock. Out here, I'm gonna get hit by wind, especially if I get a storm tonight, but you get the view. So it's a little bit of a, balancing act most likely it's going to be in the in the trees well i definitely need to use two trees but most likely in a stand of trees just to get some cover and protection from the wind tonight all right so i found what looked like a spot at first and then i walked around for probably 45 minutes just now at least a mile of extra wandering around just couldn't quite make up my mind on where to set up the hammock and finally i found it and i'm right back where i was when I first left the trail 45 minutes ago. At this point, it's like five o'clock. Um, yeah, sometimes it's just better to have time at camp instead of finding the perfect camp spot, but I didn't follow that rule today. No big deal. All right, now I'm gonna get set up. That is up, pushing the limits a bit of the distance between the trees, but uh, it seems to tighten up the ridge line and everything once I get in there okay. It's not the perfect hang, but it'll work for tonight. My tarp is a little slack looking right now. I'm gonna adjust that and just pitch it down, but I wanted to show you guys before I do that. I'm just gonna kind of do a low pitch to keep the wind off of me, which unfortunately is ripping through here pretty good as you probably hear on the video. Got my Dutchware Chameleon hammock there with the solid top cover instead of the mesh bug net. It just has a vent up at the end and that'll keep this wind off of me, keep a couple degrees of heat inside with me. That'll be real nice considering this wind. Got my zero degree under quilt from hammock here and inside lofting up in advance. There's my gray zero degree top quilt. I'm ready to go. Baby fluff off. I got a stuff sack hanging from the ridge line just to put my stuff in. Cuban fiber tarp from hammock here as well. At this point, I'm set up. I'm hungry. I skipped lunch. I uh, did not mean to do that. I had chicken salad with me or um, from Packet Gourmet that I was going to rehydrate, but it just didn't happen. So I ended up having snacks, and that's it. So what I'm going to do is uh, maybe have a ramen noodle pre-meal and then my dinner which i'm going to have some mountain house meals that i brought that um, i'm going to use up probably going to be an early night for me anyway to tell you the truth it is windy here um, but i did want to set up by this ridge just so i could go out there and see stuff at night 
Tomorrow is going to be about double the mileage, and I'll be a little more with it. I'm just tired from that drive. So, make some meals, see some views, get a little sunset, hit the hay. Sounds good for day one. So, uh, there's my cook set, as I showed on the what's in my pack video that goes along with this video. So, you already know what's in there, but let's break it out and cook some noodles. Canister stove out. Oh, it's a bit of a mud pit around here, that's for sure. In fact, I need to go get some water, but I want to get these noodles started first. Actually, you know what? I should probably bring it over here on the other side of the rocks because of that wind. Protect it from multiple angles this way. Got the titanium flashing, just about an ounce piece of titanium. Keep the wind off of it, depending on where it's coming from, but it's basically off from the other side of that rock there. The water, get that boiling, throw some ramen noodles in it. This is my little cheapy stove, but it does have the built in piezo igniter, and it still works, so might as well use it while it works. Pop that on. Nice lid on there to speed up the process. There we go. Alright, let's get the noodles. Alright, whichever ramen I grab first, I got three different flavors. Let's see. Shrimp it is. I'm just gonna pop it in now. The water's nowhere near boiling yet, but can't hurt. Get it a head start. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'll just shut it off and let it steep. And that'll make good usage of my fuel. Good enough. Make sure not to lose that seasoning packet. And I'm good, good, go. Ah, can't wait. Almost noodle time. Didn't take long. As soon as it comes to a simmer, I usually just cut it off. No need to sit here and boil the thing, especially because I got my Reflectix Cozy there, my little homemade Cozy. Careful not to burn your fingers on this stuff. I'll just use my stuff sack that came with it to grab it real quick with the handles in. Drop it perfectly down in there. And it's off. Let that sit like that. Nice and insulated and percolating while I go get water. We found our water source. It is pent to keep the ponies from contaminating it. I suppose. Unless you really love ponies and it's no big deal. Now, which way do we get in? Ah, okay, I get it. The fence over here to keep them from pooing upstream. You don't have to walk in the fence to get to the water. Well, this is easy enough, right? Certainly can't complain about this. That is some easy water. And when I get back, noodles will be done. I'm going to eat those while I cook dinner. All right, that's two gallons, way more than I need. But, might as well be excessive. This will cover me for tonight, tomorrow morning, and then everything I need on the trail tomorrow. Not bad, the views around here are pretty amazing too. I mean, it's, it's stunning. All right, water is done. It's been a while down there just looking around, checking out the views, but I am starving. I don't even know if I'm gonna make it to my real uh, mountain house dinner tonight. Mac and beef, which I used to do all the time on my solo trip, so it's kind of classic. I found it in the basement, I just grabbed whatever was around. So you know what, I am gonna have that. But first I'm gonna have these noodles. Let's see if they're still hot in my little insulator. I was away for a while. It's funny, you do a couple little chores, time just goes so fast when you're at camp, especially by yourself. Woo, yeah, those are warm. Maybe even a little hot. And I'm gonna get into these. Then I'm gonna filter some water in the Sawyer squeeze. Now I was thinking I could be cooking my dinner while I'm eating this, but that's not true because all I have is this 750 mil pot and no cup or anything. I just use this to drink a coffee out of in the morning and to cook in dual purpose type of situation. But really the one pot is fine and it's less stuff to travel with. Mm. Oh yeah. And that is indeed still hot. Oh man, oh my god. I did not eat enough today. Woo! Stopped and got a breakfast sandwich on the way. 
figured I'd treat myself since I was hiking and burning calories, right? But um, other than that, I had that snack that you saw, and that's it. I am st <laughs> starving. It's so good. Those views out there are so cool. Although it's getting a little intense around here for real. Um, clouds are whipping by, winds whipping by, as you can hear. I just hope it doesn't rain too hard and blow rain all over me tonight. But whatever happens, happens. I'm gonna eat this in my second dinner, and I swear I'm just gonna probably pass out. There it is, old school mountain house mac and beef. Manufacture date, July 2014. I haven't had this stuff in a while. I'm looking forward to it. Solo trip style. Stir. Seal it up before that precious heat gets away. Let it sit in the reflect, it's cozy. Pop this on top just for extra insulation. I don't know if that does anything or not, but 15 minutes later, some nice back and beef. No views out there anymore. It is, uh, I'm totally fogged in. So I think when I went to get water was my best opportunity for views. I'm happy I did that. Hung out for a little bit. I'm gonna eat this here mac and beef. Hit the hay over there. Hope I have a nice restful sleep. And we'll start this adventure again in the morning. Oh, what a lovely fogged in morning, huh? Pretty much what happened last night the fog rolled in and it's been like this ever since i had to put the camera away it started drizzling just a drizzling rain all night on and off i did keep the rain gear on and i stayed out here and those of you that follow the channel will be quite proud i hope because i actually did get a little fire going had the patience to do that sat there in front of the fire for a little bit relaxed in the light rain and then finally retired to the hammock still didn't get quite as much sleep as i wanted it was super comfortable in the hammock over there and I was nice and warm. I'm totally overkill with those zero degree quilts, so that's nice. Plus I had that top cover, the solid cover instead of bug net, and it only went down into like the high 30s instead of the 20s, which is awesome. And when I opened up that cover, I could tell it was really doing some work because I could feel that cold air really hit me once I opened that top cover. So that thing definitely works. What kept me up was not comfort or warmth, but this wind kept battering into the tarp and just smashing it all night and just keeping me up on and off throughout the night. Once that finally subsided, I started hearing some rummaging out here and there were ponies. There was two ponies rummaging around and I did have my, I took it down now, but I had my uh, food bag up. But what they were going after was like my empty water bottles, my Sawyer squeeze stuff over there. <laughs> I was yelling at them, come on, get out of here, get out of here. Being polite, but you know, firm didn't make a difference at all. In fact, their reaction to uh, being told to leave was simply to just stay for about another 15 minutes until one of them actually came all the way up to my hammock, right up to the tarp, and me was within a couple feet to the point where I had to shake my hands and say, don't come over here, um, no food. So then they finally got out of here. It was an interesting night for sure. What I'm gonna do right now is make some coffee. I actually already have some made. I'm just gonna pack up, I'm not gonna eat breakfast right now maybe later once I'm on the trail it is cold muddy and I just want to start making progress on this loop hope this fog burns off all right here we go into the fog it's clearing a little bit but it seems as though there's plenty more rain in my future today even some thunderstorms overnight which I don't like hearing about that it's at around 4 a.m. so batting down the hatches and Try to find a smart location tonight, but we'll feel it out. Try to pull another report down in a little bit. If it's actually like dangerous weather, we could always just beeline it for the car. But as of right now, I'm planning on being out here. So Appalachian Trail right now, we're gonna hit the Mount Rogers Trail. Not to be confused with around here is the Mount Rogers Spur Trail to the summit of Mount Rogers. I'm gonna skip that for the sake of time and mileage and going to hit the Mount Rogers Trail. That's going to start kind of making me double back. And I'll hit the AT again because the AT kind of zigzags through here. Once I get back on the AT, I'll be able to take that to Wise Shelter. And I'm going to do a portion of the Crest Trail, which was suggested to me on the way to rejoin the AT. So we'll check that out too. I'm going to start going uphill. <laughs> I recognize you guys. This duo here is the Marauding Party from last night. The little guy. He's the one who came up to my 
hammock and the big guy was spending more time by the fire pit I was in around. Good morning. Now you don't want to talk to me. I'm not trying to sleep now. Oh well. Bye guys. Maybe I'll see you on the way out. Ooh, ice. Oh, man. That would not be a good way to start the day. Nice. Oh, we are up to 44 degrees. Well, I got to ditch yet another layer. At least while I'm moving. Speaking of clothing, I said I'd update you on that because I obviously took way more than I needed. I've just been wearing this military fleece the whole time. It weighs a pound. I haven't touched my down jacket at all. Only weighs eight ounces. This has been fine. Honestly, I could have left this and I thought about it. Realistically, could have left this at the car. I'm usually not hiking in it. I'm just wearing it at night. Um, and then also the fleece pants. Those are the two things that I was fairly certain I wouldn't use, but brought them along just to experiment anyway. When I was driving down, the forecast was for potentially in the 20s. Then I would have maybe put the fleece pants on just to be comfortable. But honestly, because of the rain, I've been wearing these hard shell layers, but the pants and the top and that traps a lot of heat. So that's one thing I definitely am glad I have is the hard shell slash rain gear. All right, let's throw this away. Watch, it'll probably start raining now, but at least I'll cool down for a little bit. Oh yeah, that feels better. Ah, nice and cool. What do we got here? Well, we got a double blaze there, so the AT makes a sharp turn. We got a blue trail here and a nice view. Now I don't see any signs. I gotta check my map and GPS real quick and see if this is my Mount Rogers trail. Kinda hope it is, because the view out here looks really nice. Beautiful area. Uh, no, that is not it. So we are there. I don't even see what trail this is on my particular GPS. But that's all right, Mount Rogers Trail is further down, so we take that bend in the AT. All right, glad I checked. Mount Rogers seems like more of a major trail, so I'm assuming we'll actually see a sign when we get to that. A little uphill here. All right, we are a little over two miles in now. We got a junction here. What do we got? Uh, Mount Rogers Summit, that's where we came from. VA 600 South. And 603, so some roads, some roads down that way. And Grindstone Campground. Oh yeah, that's where I thought about starting from in my early planning stages, but I did not. But you could basically do the same loop I'm doing from that campground, but it would be four miles to get to this loop instead of parking right at Massey Gap like I did. So, still on Appalachian Trail for a little longer. Follow those white blazes. Oh, wait, another sign just a mere switchback or two later so this makes a little more sense I was thinking we should be hitting it soon I didn't bother checking my GPS but let's see uh, no never mind it's a spring and Highlands horse trail which I think maybe that was that trail I saw I wonder if I could have taken that back there and ended up here oh and it's blue so yeah I was thinking about it but it wasn't on my GPS played it safe but that'd probably be cool because I've been basically just in the woods this whole time. But it's been real nice. You know, you saw those mossy green areas and some stream crossings and stuff like that. So it's been enjoyable. But if I came back in the future, maybe I'd switch it up and take that route too. Okay, I screwed up. Definitely screwed up. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I just have to admit it, I did. The uh, sign back there, I should have turned. I should have went towards that campsite after all. I was walking along, running through, tabulating the miles and the math in my head, and I'm just thinking, there's no way I should still be on the Appalachian Trail this long. It's over two miles now. And then I look at the map, and the mileage isn't adding up, and then I see that campsite there, and it hits me. So, it's all right. This happens. Hopefully I didn't waste too much time on this. If anything, I'll just skip a... Uh, lunch break. I mean, I'll eat lunch, but maybe I won't like lounge around too long. I don't know. We'll see how timing goes for the rest of the day now. It's uh, it's 11 o'clock. Now, I didn't leave camp until I said I was going to get out of there quick, but I don't know. I was being lazy. I didn't leave camp until 9.30. So we've only been hiking an hour and 40 minutes now, and uh, we'll just get back on track. 
Okay, and back to the sign. Wasn't nearly as bad of a mistake as I thought, according to my GPS. Cruising along about four and a half miles in, minus my mistake. So I guess about four miles now. It's not quite 12 o'clock yet, but we're mostly just staying in the woods. But look at these really cool. I mean, it just gets greener and greener and mossier and mossier. Another nice thing about being back in here, it's peaceful, it's quiet. And a lot of that is because we're out of the wind. So as much as I'm looking forward to getting back on some ridge lines, I can hear wind in the distance. Yesterday I was getting knocked around. I mean, my, my pack was getting caught like a sail. It wasn't like knockdown wind. I've been in wind before where it's like, oh, this is knocking me down and has knocked me down. It wasn't that bad, but it was like, watch your footing. What we got here, an intersection? Yep, Lewis Fork Spur Trail. I believe that's what we're gonna take. Might as well take a quick break, put together some kicking chicken hot wings wrap, like a buffalo chicken wrap. But I'm not gonna actually put it in a wrap, so it's basically gonna be buffalo chicken salad. I'll let that hydrate for like eh, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even more, just let it sit in my pack. Keep hiking, eat lunch in about half an hour. Drink some water too, stay hydrated. So the Lewis Fork Trail actually looks like it's not just one point to point and, and trail. It, and it's not a loop either, I, I don't think. It kind of looks like a circuit of trails. So the spur trail I just took up there connected me onto it. And that was kind of faint, barely any more distinguishable than say a trail to an unofficial campsite or something. Almost thought I wasn't on the right trail. Had to confirm with my GPS. And then it dumped me out on this, pretty much walking down a riverbed or creek bed. But looks pretty cool, got a nice vibe to it. I'll tell you what, another thing I really like about this Ohm, this ULA Ohm pack, I mentioned in my other video how big these hip pouches are. They're big enough that I can actually fit my chicken salad in there. It's hydrating as I walk. It's phase two, I'm gonna add hot sauce and mayonnaise. I don't even have to take my pack off. Cliffside Trail. This is the trail that was recommended by several viewers and it'll take me towards the Appalachian Trail and ultimately Wise Shelter. So, I just gotta decide which way. We're taking a right. This trail appears to be going uphill, which means I should probably finally eat my chicken salad. I said I was gonna eat at 12.30. It's like well after one o'clock right now. I just got in the zone, but don't want to end up like yesterday, so a little chicken salad, Texas peat hot sauce, mayonnaise, spicy goodness. Now I do wish I had a wrap, I got a tortilla to put it on, but that's all right. Oh my, is that the sun? Ladies and gentlemen, the sun just came out. Ah, oh, that feels good. Chicken, sun's out. I'm doing good. By the way, I keep referring to today, or yesterday I kept referring to today as like eight miles. It's gonna be more like 10 to 12, which is fine. We're about seven point something in, let's call it seven. And if we're going to around, I don't know, 11, I forget the exact mileage because I was looking at several different routes, but let's call it 11. I think I got four more miles, yeah. Mm. Sun went away. It's still out more than it has been the whole trip though, so I'll take it. Hey guys, how you doing?
wind now a little bit you know it's coming and going but not like it was on the ridge out there see we're kind of getting back into the trees here we work along kind of a nice variation that they give you in the Grayson Highlands that's for sure it's certainly an easy enough path to follow the view a little water snack at the bottom of this hill should be a pretty decent trail intersection and then we'll take I believe a right we'll double check should be I reckon within a mile and change less than two miles I would believe for sure of the shelter now hiking a little longer today it is four o'clock right now but I don't see it taking longer than an hour to get there well, actually, it's 4.06. I'm going to sit here and relax a little bit. Still got plenty of time till sunset, which is 7.30 or something like that. So, not bad. have another intersection. Scales Trail is what we're on. Now this says Appalachian Trail, Bear Pen Trail, Big Wilson, everything this way. It says Appalachian Trail's that way. It threw me off a little bit, but we're actually staying on the Scales Trail, which is gonna run right into Wise Shelter, which is a shelter on the Appalachian Trail. Both of these trails actually hit the Appalachian Trail. It's kind of bended out there, and both these trails are going towards it. But I guess technically that's the shortest way to get to the AT. But to get to the shelter, which is on the AT, we're going to continue on the Scales Trail here. And uh, I kind of like this little wind down here. Walking through the rhododendron, a little sun out, calm, not too windy. Good way to wind it down. Anything around here is fine with me. I just want to be uh, close to that water, which I hear. You know where the water is? I hear there's a water source. I mean, I can hear it. No? All right. Well, I'll see you later. Not too far away from those very ponies, I believe I've found the perfect campsite. Well, there's no such thing possibly as the perfect campsite, but this one's pretty good. Come on in, let me show you the place. Oh, quite comfy. Yeah, my ridge line's a little slack. Once again, I'm between two trees that I'm a little closer together than I would probably like but I'm gonna take it. I'm not the most finicky sleeper, uh, so I'll be fine. 
Last night, all that kept me up was a bunch of wind against my tarp. Definitely not the hammock. The hammock, super comfy. You see, I got here just a stuff sack. I don't have a Ridgeline organizer. I just have a stuff sack. In here is my uh, sleeping hat. I have a separate hat, fleece hat for sleeping to keep my head nice and warm. I'll throw my phone in there at night, uh, flamethrower, whatever other devices you want. And, oh man, look at that. Lounging. And then you can see, I would have that guy closed, but I can still see the world and lets out some moisture, condensation, stuff like that. Kept me real toasty last night without feeling like clammy. It was nice. Barely want to get up right now. Again, probably not the perfect angle, but taking what I can get. And I'm well below the weight rating for this hammock, so. The more you get away from a 30 degree perfect hang, as they call it, the more stress you put on the hammock and then the weight that you put in it is multiplied far greater. So whatever weight rating your hammock has, if you don't hang it right, like I probably have right here, then it's gonna greatly magnify the actual stress in the hammock. So even though you weigh 200 pounds, it might feel like a thousand pounds of stress if you don't hang the hammock right. Just hang out, lounge in the hammock, make some dinner. I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna make that. That's pretty good. Oh, I forgot to bring soy sauce for it. That would have been awesome. Maybe get some more water in the stream over there. A clean water bag that's been filled. Let's see what this guy needs. Two cups boiling water on the dot. All right, let me take my little measuring device, which is just a cut open bottle here. All the way to the top of this is 16 ounces. I have a 14 ounce mark, because that's what most of the packet gourmet meals that I like take, as well as my Mountain House smaller serving meals, but let's fill this up, two cups. If it's a little less, that's okay. I find usually less is better than more water with the Mountain House. Just to the side, spark this guy up. Woo I'm not in that big of a rush, even though I'm hungry, but let's conserve fuel and not go too crazy. All right. Woo, sweet and sour pork. Still can't believe I didn't bring soy sauce, but you know, little packets from the to-go places, but that's okay, it's gonna be good. Actually, I have a ramen rescue by Packet Gourmet. Maybe I'll steal the sriracha sauce from that. No, maybe I should save that for the noodles. I still don't know tomorrow for breakfast if I wanna have ramen rescue, which is ramen noodles with like a kind of a kick up packet from Packet Gourmet. It's like some vegetables and stuff like that, sriracha, a little spice, or oatmeal. But I guess I should probably just focus on dinner before I get too caught up in breakfast. All right. You just come to a boil. Can't wait to eat. They are still here. So my pony friends are right there. I got a view of the mountains, view of the sky. What's going on here? I'm trying to have dinner. One, two, three, four. All five of you? Really? Maybe you're making your way to your bedtime spot, which is fine. But like, if you want to scavenge, maybe wait till tomorrow to look for some noodles I dropped. But right now, I haven't even started my dinner. Seriously, guys. Is this how it's going to be all night? I love you too. We're best friends very quickly, but I'm thinking maybe Maybe you uh, just give me a little bit of space, honestly. Having you walk around camp, you know, your little hooves and you're kind of heavy, you might step on stuff and break stuff and I don't know, it just probably isn't the best. But I know this is your home and I like you letting me stay here, so thank you. Oh, you're marking it. I get it. Yes, this is your campsite, I understand. You're rubbing your butt on it too? Good Lord, come on. Maybe I do have to sleep here tonight, you know. Oh my. Well, that's really appetizing. I'm going to go try to eat some dinner now. Thanks. Apparently, I'm having dinner with the ponies. And that's fine. As long as they don't trample all my belongings. But I figure they live here most of the time. Not me. They just want to come to camp so bad. I don't even know if you guys can see me right now. But basically, it's the end of my day. I got my dinner here, sweet and sour pork with rice, it's 
it's been percolating for a while while I was getting some pictures of the ponies. It's way more food than I need and I don't care. Oh man, pineapples. Oh, that is really good. Oh, and save the spicy mustard packets to give you two. You just kind of randomly squirt it in the bag. So good. But anyway, this is good. I feel like now I'm going to be invaded even more when they smell this. Um, but yeah, that's my night. I'm going to collect some firewood. Maybe make a small fire just for the fun of it. Listen to a podcast, make a fire, hit the hay, and then tomorrow morning we'll get back on the trail. We don't have many miles to make, so we can really take our time and just enjoy this place. And it, <laughs> I'm really, really, really liking this place. It's turning out to be really great. So, except for you over there. Hey, watch out. Stay away from my stuff. Anyway, yeah, having a good time. Morning, everybody. Whew. Oh man, cold weather has definitely returned. It's like 34 degrees right now. So I would say we might have tapped the high 20s last night. Certainly feels like it. Put my windbreaker on first thing after getting up this morning. But the good news is it's dry. A little more wind than last night, but it never did rain, which is awesome. Uh, I got a wake-up call from a pony this morning. That was pretty cool. Came right up, looked under the tarp. He just passed through camp, looked under the tarp. I said hi, and uh, he kept going. Actually, heard them neighing over here a little bit as well in the earlier morning hours, so it's pretty cool. Definitely having my pony experience, that's for sure. But I'm gonna make some coffee now. I stayed in the hammock until like after eight o'clock just lounging. We don't have too many miles to get out of here. Like I said yesterday, like four-ish. So I'm just gonna enjoy myself. It's a nice area. Have some breakfast, coffee water. Got my dehydrated coffee to go with that. That'll be waking me up this morning. And I did decide to go with Ramen Rescue. So actually this is just regular ramen noodles and then the Ramen Rescue packet. Nice hot breakfast, get fueled up, hit the trail and enjoy the day. Well, I do believe that is the parking lot. So there you have it, Virginia's Grayson Highlands. Just a little sample of what it has to offer. It's an amazing place. I also gotta say a big, huge special thanks to all the viewers out there that chimed in, that helped me choose this trip, plan this trip, everything from start to beginning. You guys were awesome, you helped a lot. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go right now and look through those comments to see if anybody suggested maybe a restaurant to go to after this. It's early afternoon now, so I'm ready to <sighs> replace some calories. But until next time, I'm Syntax 77. Right now, it's cheeseburger time.